Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how anyone can automate Helium 10 in the browser without using a single line of code using Axiom.ai, a no-code browser automation tool. I'm Alex Barlow, co-founder. Let's dive in. First of all, a little bit of context. I'm not going to show you Axiom automating the whole of Helium 10, otherwise we'll be here for a very long time, but it can. Okay, what I'm going to show you is Axiom automating Cerebro. As you can see, I have the tool open on screen and it's um, Helium 10's ASIN keyword tool. I'm going to show you Axiom reading from a list of ASINs in a spreadsheet. Then Axiom is going to open up Helium 10. It's going to open up Cerebro. It's going to automate the input of those keywords into Cerebro. It will then You'll see it then click on the settings where it will do some tick boxing and then it will export the data, but it won't stop there. Then Axiom is going to import that exported CSV and write it to a Google sheet. Just as you can see, I've got my test sheet here. Before I do the test, because I'm going to show you the magic in a second, I'm going to show you the bot running. I'm going to remove all of that data so you can see it writing. Okay, so that's the context. Now let's see the magic. So now for the magic, the part I never get tired of watching Axiom automate the browser. It's so friggin' cool. I love it. So I'm going to click run in a second. But quickly, if you're not familiar with Axiom, it's a Chrome extension. It's free to download from the Chrome store. All new accounts get two free hours of runtime to give it a go. So once it's installed, you simply click on toggle and Axiom lives with you in the browser. So you can open it on any page. Why do we do that? It's simple because as you build your Axioms with our builder here, you add steps to replicate the actions like clicking, interacting with drop list, et cetera. And, and that's made easier because the tool is on the page and it can be closed when you don't want it. So that's not an issue. But anyway, now there's several ways to run your axioms. You can run them manually. You can run them in the cloud. You can schedule them. You can run them on your desktop. I'm just going to click run here on the desktop. and I'm going I'm to see the magic. So this is pretty cool. Axiom is going to share the session. So I'm going to be logged into Cerebro already. As we can see, it's opened up here. We can see it running. Now, here's Axiom. It's typed in my hands here. It's so cool. It's typed in the ASIN from the Google Sheet I talked about. It clicks to get rid of that box. We don't need that. It's now gone to the keyword page. It's going to click on the settings. You see it scrolled the page there. It's going to it's untoggled all the settings. And then it's just going to click a new setting. There we go, organic rank. Then we're going to click on the export data button. Here we go. It's going to export the CSV down onto my computer, which is pretty cool. See, there, it, there the file download goes. Now it's going to then, this is part where we're not seeing anything on the screen because now it's writing the data to the Google Sheet. So let's just go to the Google Sheet, which I emptied earlier. And you can see we've got some new data in there. You'll also see it's just completed that row. So we remove that row. And Axiom is going to then loop and do the next keyword. So Axiom is going to keep going. It's going to churn through all that boring cutting and pasting you would normally do. That's why this is a pretty cool tool for automating the browser. And I always smile when I'm watching um, the Axioms in actions. It's so cool. So that would continue looping through your list. But as much as I love spending time watching, watching, um, Axioms do their job. I'm sure you probably actually want to understand more about how this was made. Did I have to use any code? No. Can you do it yourself? Yes. You can also just take the template we're going to provide with this and you can completely customize this. And yes, you can use this tool to automate other parts of Helium 10. So that's exciting. So enough of the magic. Let's go get on with how I made this automation and show you how you could do it yourself. Okay, I've stopped the Axiom. It's not running anymore, otherwise we keep on going through a list of ASINs, so it can do hundreds of ASINs. So I've got to admit that's pretty cool. So now I'm going to show you how, if you've got the template. Now, if you don't see the template on store because the video comes out before we add it to the store, you can just email alex at axiom.ai and I'll share it with you. But if you've got the template installed from the store, then this is how you set it up. It's pretty easy. Now, you can learn more and customize this completely, adding your own steps and your own tricks. I won't talk you through every step. I'm just going to show you the configuration steps from the template. 
after that, I'll talk you through all the steps in order and explain what it does in depth if you want to learn more. Okay, so if you've got the template installed, all you need to do is first of all is add your own Google Sheet. In this step one Google Sheet, you need to um, basically have your ASIN data. And now we've got two columns. So column A will be the, the ASIN number. In column B, we add just the ASIN text for every number. So if you've got more than one number, make sure you've got ASIN beside it. Why do we do that? Well, I'll explain that now because we do a condition met here. And we just check to make sure the ASIN word's there. If it's not there, it means the sheet's empty and we stop the axiom. Okay, so that's why we add the ASIN in column B besides every number in this template. So please make sure you do that or it won't run. Okay, next step you need to configure. These will all be set up for you. Is that here, you may want to um, basically, yeah, if you want to remove any of the steps like um, clicking on the, sorry, lost my train of thought here. If you want to remove any of the steps like select all or the organic rank or add to them, they're all done between step 4.7 and 4.9. Now, I'll explain more how to do that later in the video, but it's literally a case of just adding additional click elements, choose more options, or just removing the steps completely if you don't want that feature. Now, the next important step to think that you need to set up is the, the download file step. You'll, of course, be prompted to set up these steps, by the way. You'll need to put your own file path in here to download your files. Okay. So you'll need to make that change. You can also customize the name want. Okay, next up, we need to specify the import file path. So you'll need to set that up. And here we've got basically a partial file path, and then we pass the token from this interact step. And what that does is pass the file name from the download onto the end of the partial file path we have there. Make sure you've got your trailing slash as well, otherwise it will be invalid. So here we insert the token, and that was pretty easy to do, it just like that essentially column A, and then we've got the file name in there. Okay, so I'm just going to collapse that step. Next up, we've got two more Google Sheet steps here. We actually, this is step seven is where you write your data to the Google Sheet, the keywords. And so you need to put your sheet name in here and the tab, I've called it data, the tab you create, you'll need to link to in here. The imported data, it's the data that writes to the sheet will of course be from the CSV we're importing. So that's all set up for you. You won't need to change that. And we add to existing data just, to, just so we don't overwrite it. The final step you'll need to set up is the delete row. So basically, this deletes a row from the ASIN where we've got the numbers. Why do we do that? Because basically, in, jump, in, st in step nine, a jump step, we tell the, the bot how many times it should loop. And so you can, you can change the amount of ASINs you run each time here okay and we delete a row because as you can see in the sheet we basically we read a row we process it we get the we get the um, keywords we then delete that row and move to the new row so that's we call that batching but that's a form of loop that we do with axiom so we're basically reading a new row in row one we go through click get the keywords we then write the data, then we delete the row we just processed and process. So when we jump back to the top and loop, we read a new row. So that's how to set up the template. It's pretty straightforward and got great support to reach out when you get stuck or confused. And now I'm going to finish off with um, explaining just how step-by-step -step this axiom is built. So if you do get stuck at all, also watch this part because I'll explain each bit and then You'll understand more how it's built, so how axioms are made, and you'll be able to build them yourself. Okay, thank you. Finally, the video is nearing its end. Well, this is going to probably be the longest part, and I'm going to take you through step by step. Now, I know many of you probably won't want to watch this part, or you may want to skip through it, but there's going to be loads of useful information that help you learn axioms. Maybe just watch parts that are relevant to some a problem you're going to solve. So let's just crack on. So the first step I use to make this axiom is a read step. Now, what do I do here? I add my sheet. I set the tab in the sheet that I'm going to use. And importantly, I'm only, I set first cell to last cell. So I'm reading A1, 
column A to B1. So I'm just reading that one row, and that's because we're going to loop through the data one row at a time. More about that in a bit. Step two, why have I added this condition? So this condition is I've set up by reading the data from the Google Sheet. I'm going to check for ASIM. Why am I doing this? Because I want to, the axiom to, when it's complete, if it's gone through everything in the sheet, I want it to, to turn itself off. So this is why we use this condition. We check for ASIM. If it's not present, the axiom will, sit, just, will just switch itself off instead of throwing an error. Okay, next up, we have our interact step. Now, interestingly, I've separated the interactions out. Why do I do this? Because basically, we don't, sometimes we don't want to do page reload. So it's an important concept there. So interact steps reload the page. Sometimes we, we don't want to do that. So I've got a skip here. So it means this interact page, we can loop back to it, but it won't reload the page because we don't want to go back to our starting point because the first page we load is here. And we don't necessarily want to do that when we're, we're entering our keywords. Okay, so let's just go step by step. So first, we've got our first interact step. It takes us to this page. And we've got a second interact step where here we're entering the text. Now you can see this, these are tokens. You can pass them. This basically allows you to pass data from sources like Google Sheets. And here I can pass the token name in the, into the sheet. And of course, when I when I we read from a new row, it's going to pass a new value in. And now to select the data field, all you need to do is point and click. Sometimes you have to experiment, you have to to click on different objects until you get elements, until you get the right one. Here, I clicked here. Now, interestingly, we do have other options with our point and click if, if you have issues where you can get custom selectors. You can see the selector tool being used there. You can also use element text, etc. Okay. I'm just going to move myself back down there. And yeah, so that's an enter text step. That first enter text step puts ASIM into the field. We do a bit of a key press here. I found it helped with the automation where we just do a return to submit the search. Key presses, by the way, are really useful ways to automate um, the browser. They're useful for, you can tab between content, you can use them to scroll up and down arrows to move the page, etc. Okay, once we've got the bots that do that, we basically then we see the we see the Get Keywords button become active. So we select that button here. And again, it's just point and click and select. You can also, with button clicks, you also, so if that doesn't work, it's quite a useful hack here. You can click by Get Words, but that selector works just fine. Okay, I'm just going to move down here. Next up, we added another click element, and that is this click element, that pop-up, if you remember back in the video, you may not have noticed, sometimes this pop-up appears, do you want to do a new search? Now, it's not always present, so how do we deal with that? We, of course, select the element here, and we can see I use the actual text, because I can. I don't only see it in runtime, I don't see it um, when the, um, let me think about it, I don't see it when, um, building the automation. So I use the element text here because I don't need to figure out CSS selector, run new search. And so that click basically cl closes the pop-up you see. And to, if it's not present, Axiom would fail if I didn't click optional click. So because I've got optional click, if the button clicks and it's not there, it won't stop the run. If it is there, it clicks it and closes it. So that's really useful. So that's the first interact step set up. So once the first one's set up, we then go, Axiom will go to this page where we've got our second interact. Our go-to page skips, so we don't reload the page because obviously once we click enter, the page is reloaded anyway. We've got a wait here. Now, wait's really useful. You could see just a second ago, the data took a little while to load in. So, that, so it's good to make Axiom then wait before firing off another click. And that next click is a click element for the settings below. And again, I just did point and click to set that up. Okay, and then we use another wait because if I click on the settings, sometimes elements take a little while to appear and we just need to slow down the interactions. So if you see an axiom not quite behaving the way you think, often 
when it's clicking and interacting, often it could be because there could be delays in elements loading. So like add weight, this is a really useful way. And then we've got another click element here after that weight uh, basically goes in, selects all, and then also unticks to get rid of it. So we do select all, we wait, and then we do a tick box here. If you want to add more tick box, just click plus here and add some more click elements and select away. Now the trick for doing selecting more see the window closes and you think, oh, that's really annoying. But if you do this little trick, just to complete, press confirm, it opens the window and then just select again, you'll be able to get the tick box. Complete. And we should see that that's been ticked. It doesn't always tick it in the demo, so I wouldn't worry about that. Again, play around with the selectors if you have issues. Then we have a wait to make sure all the options are ticks before we moved on to the next part of the automation. Again, we use an interact. We've got skip in here. This means it won't refresh the page or load a new URL. Then finally, we're ready to export the data. Again, it's another click element. We just click on the button, etc. And um, before we download the file, when you're downloading the file, to sorry, export, you'll need to click on the as a CSV file. So again, I did the so we just need to click on that. So how did I do that? Basically. I think this is what I actually did to do this. I actually used the text to select. I used Chrome Inspector. Use element text as a CSV file, press complete. So we do basically two clicks here, one to click open, one to download the CSV file, and that's the download complete. Okay, so then we import the file, and that's where basically this, within this interact step, we've isolated the download file. We don't have any other steps here that return data. So when we get the data back, we can just get the file name, put our file path in. You can click to select to find the file path and um, then I basically choose interact to data where the download file is and add the column. Cool. And finally we write the data, that imported data we can write straight into a Google Sheet. I've got my sheet set up in the tab add to existing so we don't overwrite and clear data and make sure data is set to imported CSV and that'll import the data from the CSV. Okay, before we then, we've got, again, we go back to the sheet where we've got the ACNs, we delete, delete the row that we've just processed before we jump and repeat the automation. So we jump back to step one. So we force the reading of a new line and then we repeat the whole process again. Now. If you're only doing 100 and you've got enough runtime, you could probably just leave this on zero and it will just loop around until it's finished. But if, if you've got to do it in batches, specify a number. Cool. Awesome. Hope you found that helpful. I hope you enjoy using the template and you enjoy automating the browser and watching that magic for yourself. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, if you are watching this video, we are about to release a chat GBT tool or step inside Axiom. So look out for that.